Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm talking all about wax seals. What to do, what not to do, and how to have fun while you're at it. Tip number one is to trim the wick of the tea light candle to prevent soot from forming on the back of your spoon. This is something I did not do when I unboxed my Wax Seals starter kit from Spellbinders. You can watch that video on my channel if you missed it. And I had soot everywhere. A simple solution is to trim the wick a little bit. You know, this will keep the fire a tiny bit further from the spoon and thus you'll have no soot buildup. Now, this will take a little longer to melt your wax, but I would rather wait a few extra seconds than have all of that soot in my white craft room. And guys, it is so hard to clean. Tip number two is to use various amounts of wax beads. If you are making a wax seal for the first time, I mean, starting with a clean spoon, use four beads to have a decent size seal. Once you have leftover wax in your spoon, because when you pour your wax, you know, you will always have a small amount of wax left in the spoon. So if you have wax left in the spoon, you can add three beads for the next seal. Three beads are the bare minimum you need to have a good looking seal on your project. I suppose you can try using two beads, but for my taste, that seal would be too small. If you're pouring wax onto a dimensional surface, and by this I mean a gift where you have ribbon or a card where you have dried flowers, try using five or even six beads. And don't pour your wax all at once. Pour a little bit to level the surface and secure the pieces together if they aren't secured, and then pour the rest of the wax and add your stamp. Sometimes when you have too much wax, you pour it and you press your stamp into it, you can have air bubbles forming in the wax. If you have that, try using less beads. Tip number three is to mark the bottom or the top part of your seal. You can use a Sharpie or any permanent marker for this. This is especially handy when you are creating a seal directly on your project. For example, on a card or on a gift or even on an envelope, and your seal has a sentiment to it or a design is directional and you don't want that design or that sentiment upside down in your project. You want it correct side up. So mark your seal and this way you'll know how to stamp it correctly. Tip number four is press or don't press. So typically you do not want to press your seal into the wax. This is not a clear block with a stamp on it or a misty where you need to use all of your body force to press that stamp and really get that ink onto the paper. No, here we do not want to do the heavy pressing. 99% of the time you don't want to press at all. You just need to gently position the seal over the wax and let the gravity pull it down. The only case where you would want to press the stamp into the wax is if you are sealing over ribbon or dried flowers or any other bulk. In this case, the surface you're placing the seal over is not flat, it is bulky, so you do need to apply a little bit of force to press the seal into the wax, you know, just a few, for a few seconds to let the wax cool. I find I need to do this when I'm wrapping my gifts and I have a bunch of decor on top of my gift. So I pour my wax, I place the stamp, and then I hold it and at the same time press it a little bit to make sure that it sits there and makes a good impression. Tip number five is to mix your wax colors. And this is, oh my gosh, the best part. So there are two ways to go about it. You can mix different colors to create new colors. This is very addictive. A little bit of color theory will go a long way here, allowing you to create new colors of wax to match the colors of your projects or, you know, just new colors of wax. You can also add white beads to make the color of your wax lighter or black beads to make the color of your wax darker. The other way to mix wax is to not actually mix it, but rather combine various color beads in the spoon and pour them together for a marbled look. That also looks amazing. Now, considering you need to use three full beads to make a seal, you can also add a half bead 
for lesser color variation, I would say. So if you want to have just a hint of another color, you can cut your bead in half, or you can cut a part of a previously poured seal that you didn't like and use that. You don't have to always start with a full size bead. Use a half or even a quarter or, you know, whatever amount you want. Keep an eye on how you put the beads in the spoon, how you position them. So one color bead on one side and the other color bead on the other side, a gold bead in the center, or one color closer to the pouring lip, and that will end up on the bottom of your seal, mostly covered by other colors. And the other color further from the lip will end up on top of your seal, most prominently visible. So you can use a little bit of planning when you are positioning your wax beads in the spoon to plan the end result. Tip number six is to remelt your failed seals. I do this all the time. So you poured a seal, you didn't like it, do not throw it away. Cut it into pieces and remelt it to create a new seal. Or save the cut up pieces to remelt later. You don't have to waste anything, you can reuse it all. Maybe you did not use enough beads and your wax seal ended up too small for your taste. Remelt it, add additional beads and redo it. Or maybe you didn't like how the colors marbled together, so cut it up, remelt it, maybe mix it to have one solid color and see if you like that. Or if your seal isn't perfectly centered, cut it up, remelt and reuse. Nothing goes to waste. Now, when you cut your seal to add it to the spoon to remelt it, make sure you cut it into small enough pieces and place it in the center of the spoon so that it doesn't go over the edge. Otherwise, you'll have wax running on the outside edge of your spoon. Tip number seven is to add stuff to your seals. You can add gilded flakes over your seal to spice it up, especially if you are using a solid seal, but do not drop the flakes into the spoon while you are still melting the wax. Add the flakes only once you've poured your wax. You can also drop tiny die-cut confetti or glitter. We all have loads of glitter. You can try adding that to your wax seal for a very cool result. I prefer to add glitter to the spoon where I can mix it well with the wax. I don't like adding glitter once I've poured my wax. So play around and see what you can make of it. You can also use perfect pearls or other embellishments that you have in your stash. Tip number eight is to use a paper towel to clean the leftover wax in your spoon. Be careful as the spoon is hot. Alternatively, you can wait for the spoon to cool off and for the wax to harden and then scrape the wax off. But personally, I prefer wiping my spoon using a paper towel or I leave the wax in the spoon and I just let it harden. Next, when I want to do more wax seals, I just add other color wax beads to my spoon that has leftover wax in it and I go from there. I just mix my own colors. I also have two spoons and it is helpful to have more than one spoon because if you are, for example, making dark colored seals using one spoon, you don't have to wipe it clean if you want to start making light colored seals. So you can use another spoon for that. Tip number nine is to let your stamp cool off. I notice that if I mass produce seals and I keep using the same stamp to make seals, the stamp warms up and becomes hot from the contact with the wax. This affects the end result. So I find the stamped designs, they degrade, they become less prominent. So it is better to use different seals, I would say, if you're mass producing, you know, maybe change between two or three different designs so that your stamp has time to cool off together with the wax. Tip number 10 is to use markers to highlight the seal design. Any opaque marker or pen can be used for this to help the seal design pop. It doesn't work every single time. I have messed up my fair share of seals doing this, but I've also made some really gorgeous seals by highlighting the designs. And remember, if you mess up, just cut it up and remelt it. Nothing goes to waste. That's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Thanks for spending time with me. Love you guys. And I'll see you next time.